So Finland was Sweden for about 500 years until uh, the early 1800s. So uh, you'll notice that Swedish is, is an official language in Finland. Some areas of Swedish, uh, sorry, some areas of Finland, Swedish is actually the majority language. Swedish speaking Finns are only about 6% of the population, but especially on the west coast that, you know, across the Gulf of Bothnia from Sweden, you have a lot of, of, na of Swedish speaking Finns. <laughs> They're Finnish people and Finnish citizens, but they speak Swedish as their native tongue. So if you serve up in Kokkola, um, in Vasa, like there's most a lot of Finnish there, so you'll be fine, but you'll see a lot of Swedish. And then there's one city in Finland, Jakobstad in Swedish and Pietrasari in Finnish. That city is still about 50% Swedish speaking. So you'll go around and you'll be speaking in Finnish and you'll have people say, I don't speak Finnish. <laughs> or they'll ask you, du svenska? Do you speak Swedish? And you'll say, no, I don't. So that's why you'll see Swedish everywhere in Finland is because Finland was Sweden until the 1800s. And then Sweden and Russia fought a war and Sweden lost. And what they lost was the territory of Finland. Um, and so Russia took control of Finland, but they didn't really um, like try to conquer it. They kind of, it, they left it as, they call it a, a grand duchy. It was an autonomous grand duchy. So even though Russia controlled Finland, they didn't really govern in Finland. Finland kind of took care of itself for about a hundred years after the end of the war with Sweden. But you know, the 1800s, a time of great turmoil in Europe and a lot of nationalistic feeling and that happened in Finland too. So you have a lot of intellectuals, artists, writers, composers who start thinking about what it means to be Finnish and um, creating, they kind of create a Finnish national identity. Uh, they start championing the, championing the use of the Finnish language over the use of Swedish in the elite. They start trying to make sure Finland Finnish is being taught, Finnish is being studied. They write literature in Finnish. They make art, like paint and, and, and draw and write music about Finnish folklore. This is all happening in the late 1800s. Finally, you get World War I, which happens, and Russia gets really involved in World War I and it causes the fall of the Russian Empire in 1917. And so when Russia starts having its civil war in 1917, that's when Finland is able to break away and become its own country. So that started in 1917 and I feel like, I feel like it was 1918 that Finland actually declared independence. So 1917, 1918, the end of World War I, the fall of the Russian Empire, that's when Finland became an independent nation. But then, you know, Russia became the Soviet Union. And so about 30 years after Finland declares independence, Russia the USSR uh, becomes involved in World War II, well, the whole world becomes involved in World War II, and Russia invades Finland. The Soviet Union invaded Finland, and Russia is like 10 times the size of Finland population-wise, but it's called one of the biggest miracles in Finnish history is that the Finnish army held the line. Russia assumed it would be able to take Helsinki in a day, and instead Finland remained an independent country throughout World War II. It's a big miracle because Finland is a very small country and Russia is a very large country. This is where Finland's spiritual history comes in. They, like the president of Finland, led like a national prayer before the soldiers went to war to defend themselves. And they asked that Finland would be protected and it was. It was protected. God protected Finland from Russia. The problem was that since Russia was part of the Allies, Finland had to turn to the Axis powers to defend itself and keep Russia out. So at the end of the war, Finland lost the war because it was allied with Germany. And so um, after the war, when uh, countries, countries that had lost were being required to pay huge war debts, Finland was involved in that. Finland had a lot of war debt but Finland is the only country that lost World War II to fully repay its debt to the United States. The only one. And Finland is also the only country sharing a border with Russia that did not become part of the Soviet Union. 
so um, Finland is really special, <laughs> really a special place for that reason. Finnish people have, it's called sisu. It's one of the qualities that Finnish people possess. You can't translate it into English. It just means kind of like gutsy and courageous and stubborn, all rolled into one. That's this word sisu that Finnish people have. That's why they've lasted as an independent nation for so long. Part of the reason Finland feels so polite is because they were caught between the United States and, and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. So this national identity that Finland has kind of developed out of this intense scrutiny it was always under, you know. And because of that, it couldn't join, like, Finland is not a member of NATO. It's not a member of a lot of treaty organizations that exist in the West because it was right next to Finland and to Russia. And so it couldn't do that without provoking this large neighbor that it had. Anyway, Finland has gone through a lot, a lot of trial and a lot of terrible times in Finland. But right now, Finland is wealthy. It's one of the wealthiest nations in the world. It has one of the best standards of living in the world. You can Google like best places to live and Finland is like almost always in the top 10. People have what they need in terms of physical needs. They have housing, they have food, they have education free for everyone. They have healthcare free for everyone. It's a socialist republic. Social republic, not socialist, social republic. <laughs> Um, that's that's a big distinction Because they have everything they need they don't seek Spiritual things very often anymore. They have what they need. So why do they need religion? So the spiritual heritage of Finland is a lot weaker than it has been in the past So I arrived in Finland. I think we flew out on December 4th with the time change that made it December 5th by the time I arrived in country in Finland the winter is very dark and very cold in December, there's only about four hours of daylight. It's way up far north. So when I got to Finland, I got there in the worst part of the year. <laughs> the worst part of the year for Finland is late November and early December. <laughs> it's your darkest time of the year. You're headed into the darkest time of the year. It's cold. It might be snowing, but if it's not cold enough, it might just be sleeting and slush. But every, the summer in Finland is worth everything you go through in the winter. So if you're arriving in the summer, congratulations. Got there in the best time and you're in for it. If you arrive there in the winter, things will get better, I promise. <laughs> if you make sure that you're exercising, eating correctly, getting enough vitamin D is absolutely essential. Uh, when you don't have sun, you don't get as much vitamin D and it really affects how you're able to regulate your mood. You do not need to worry in terms of crime and safety. Finland is one of the least corrupt nations in the world. Routinely is in the top five. You can Google. It's true. There is so little violent crime. The only thing is people in Finland do get, they do like alcohol. <laughs> they drink a lot of alcohol. And so you'll meet drunk people who you sometimes have to just be careful around. Usually they're harmless, but Finland is so safe. Just like normal personal caution is all you need to worry about. Like don't, uh, don't be reckless and definitely don't be stupid, but about where you are and where your surroundings, like if you can see it's a dangerous situation, leave. You would do the same at home. But for the most part, you don't need to worry. Finland is very safe. Finland is a pretty um, Western country, so you don't have to worry about being in a country where they eat completely differently from the way you're used to eating. They have grocery stores everywhere. The only weird foods you'll eat are the ones that you choose to eat, essentially. Um, and I think you should try some of the Finnish dishes, but you don't have to be worried. Um, you, you know, I mean, they have bread, they have fruit, they have cereal, they have peanut butter. You might have to look a little bit for the peanut butter. Um, Lidl. Lidl is the store that sold peanut butter when I was in Finland. Um, and it'll be like a little bit different from what you're used to, but not very much. The only thing you can't buy is like root beer, <laughs> you know? Um, so don't be worried about eating. Eating is great in Finland. <laughs> um, some things that I love about Finnish food are that it is fresh. They don't use preservatives in hardly anything. So the bread is fresh. 
the milk is fresh, pasteurized, but fresh. <laughs> um, the cheese is fresh. One thing that that does mean is you have to eat it faster than you would in America. It won't keep for a long time. Like I had a, bread, a loaf of bread for like three months and it didn't go moldy. That is not true in Finland. You have like two weeks maybe for the bread, maybe a week on the milk. <laughs> okay, so you have to eat it quickly when you buy it, but you can buy it. I love rye bread. In Finland, it's called ruisleipä. It's a dark rye, not like the rye bread we have in America. It's chewier and, and a bit more hardier, a bit hardier, so you'll need to <laughs> adjust to it, but it's very good, very filling. They sell it everywhere. Eat it. It's good. Uh, they also have oat bread that's better than any bread I've had in the United States ever. I love bread. <laughs> Finished bread is the best. Finished cheese, milk, ice cream, all the dairy products, super awesome. And in terms of dishes, what they call perus ruoka will be like potatoes, uh, meat chunks, and like a gravy sauce. So you have your boiled potatoes that are not peeled. That's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's great. Um, and then you pour over it like this meaty gravy sauce. It's like gravy, but with the meat chunks put in it and all cooked together, so it's super good. Um, with a side of like boiled carrots and then lingam berries or uh, puolukka. Those are those tart berries. Basically, if you go to Ikea and eat the meatballs, that's kind of what Finnish perusuruoka is. Tastes really good. But you'll also be able to find everything there from like Asian and, and Mexican, Latin American. My mom always used to ask me like, what do Finns eat? As if it was some strange, weird, like if you went to China, you'd have to eat duck or something, or like dog. There's nothing like that in Finland. It's a Western country. It has some Scandinavian traditions, but you can find pretty much anything you want there. But uh, I love Perusuruoka. It's so good. Also, if you ever get the chance to eat reindeer meat, do it. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And where else in the world are you going to get to eat reindeer? <laughs> um, since Finland is up north, they eat a lot of fish. It's a big part of their diet. If you don't like fish, um, I didn't like fish. I still don't really like fish, but I could eat fish now. Um, salmon, they eat a lot of salmon. And it's actually really good in Finland because it's so much fresher than you would be able to get in many places in the United States. You can just like smoke it. Don't eat the raw smoked salmon, eat the cooked smoked salmon. What else? There's lojiketo, which is this cream-based soup that they make with the salmon and potatoes and dill and it's really good. So good. There's one fish dish that you should definitely try when you're in Finland, but I'm not going to guarantee that you like it. It's, um, it's called silli. And what it is, it's pickled herring. And it comes in a variety of flavors. You just gotta try it. You might like it, uh, you might not, but it's something you definitely have to eat at least once. Also, there's an Easter dish called mammi. I don't even know, it's made out of rye. It's supposed to be a dessert, but you have to put a ton of sugar on it to make it sweet. Uh, and it's not, it's not bad. I like mammi. By now, someone has told you that Finnish is the hardest language in the world to learn. Um, and I am here to tell you that it is not. <laughs> it is not impossible to learn Finnish or to even be good at Finnish. A lot will depend on your own affinity or your own talent at learning languages, how advanced you get in the language, but um, anyone can learn to speak Finnish. The reason you've heard it so hard is because it's so different from English. Um, it's, and it's different from a lot of other common languages that English speakers study, like Spanish, French, German. It's not related to any of those languages. The only languages it's related to that are widely spoken are Hungarian and Estonian. What sets Finnish apart from a lot of other languages is that all of the syntactic function, the grammatical function of the words that you use, most of it is carried by endings that you put on the words and not by separate words. So like in English, we have a lot of prepositions in, an, uh, in, on, to, from, about. All of those meanings are contained in endings that go on the word. So for example, the, the 
Finnish word for uh, dog is koira. So if dog, koira, is the subject of your sentence, there are no endings on it. But if it's going to be the direct object of your sentence, so like, I saw the dog, koira becomes koiran. I saw the dog, nina, nine, koiran, with an n at the end. The same thing if you change the function. If you make it the object of a preposition, there will be a different ending for that. So if you say, I want to talk about the dog, koira becomes koirasta. If you're worried about learning Finnish, I think the key to learning Finnish is learning the meaning of all the endings, and there are 15 of them, 15 different endings, which sounds like a lot, um, but you can learn them. And the more you know about what those mean, and the more you know about the patterns and the ways that they attach onto the words that they describe, or the words that they are going to be used with, then it just is a game of patterns. You just have to learn the patterns. And then, as you add more words into your vocabulary, um, you'll be able to talk about anything. It did take me about eight months to feel like I was comfortable uh, speaking to someone without a lot of preparation beforehand. I was pretty good at Finnish, and I got told that I spoke Finnish very well for a foreigner. Don't be worried about not knowing how to say something. Just, I would almost work harder on learning how to just speak and not worry so much about how it's coming out, but worry more about what you're trying to say and worry about the message that you're trying to convey. And then as you progress, you'll get better and better at doing that grammatically. But in the beginning, you just need to be bold about speaking. Good luck with learning Finnish. I promise you can do it. I promise you'll grow to love it. So, hello. Terve. Terve. In the T-E-R-V-E. Terve. That's a general greeting you can use with anyone that you meet. Some other greetings you might use, uh, if you're on the street wanting to be friendly, you could say moi, moi, M-O-I, moi. And that's just like, hey, hi, how, um, how are you? Mita kuulu, mita kuulu. It means <laughs> what belongs. <laughs> But uh, that's how you ask, how are you doing? It's like, what's happening? Kind of like, what's happening? Mita kuulu. So if you are meeting someone for the first time, you could say, Terve, mita kuulu. Hello, how are you? That actually might be better for someone you've met before that you have introduced yourself to already. If someone asks you, mita kuulu, you can just reply with, Huva, which means good. Huva. Um, you'll notice that some of my vowel sounds are not familiar to you. That's okay. Uh, the more you hear them and the more you practice with them, especially the U, which is spelt with a Y in Finnish. The letter Y is said U. Um, you have the O with umlauts over, that's U. And then A with umlauts is A, which you already know. Thank you. Kiitos. Kiitos. K-I-I-T-O-S. Kiitos. I'm sorry. Anteeksi. Anteeksi. A-N-T-E-E-K-S-I. Anteeksi. Not really a word for please in Finnish. If you feel like you want to say an equivalent, you could just say ole huva, which means be good. And then you would say ole huva ja isto. Please sit. Ole huva, ole huva, ja sure. Be be good and eat, or please eat. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty formal. Most people won't expect you to say please. They'll just expect that you're polite. So that's one thing about Finnish. The command form is used uh, more often than we do in English. We always want to hedge our commands with something like please, would you do this, will you do this? In Finland, they'll just say the command form, and it's not impolite. So don't worry if people sound really harsh where they say like, istuka, that means sit down. That's polite. It's not rude, it's not forceful. Uh, you'll tell by the tone of voice whether or not they're angry at you. Most of the time they're not. Finns are very, very polite. Very polite people. Yes is gula, but you'll hear a lot also yo, that's kind of like, yeah, 
So you have gula, which is yes, and yo, which is kind of like yeah. Uh, no is a, a, and then nice to meet you. You'll be using all the time. Haushika tabata, haushika tabata, and that means fun to meet. Nice to meet you. Haushika tabata, haushika tabata. And those are some common greetings and phrases in, for Finnish that you can start using right away. You can go up to anyone you meet and say, Terve mitakuulu.